painting. All right, we're about to go live. I don't know how this works. You got to tell me when we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I never know. It like shows that it's not live, but then when I go to watch the recording, it is already live. So we are live for sure now. Yes. So <laughs> anyway, we are so excited to be here. If you join us, we want to know where you're watching from. Um, chat up in the um, in the comment section. We want to hear from you. If you have questions during it, I will be watching the chat while um, Kylie is teaching, and I'll make sure that we get your questions in there as well. Um, I am so glad that you guys are a part of this group. And one of the things that I want to happen in this group is for you to always feel empowered, equipped, and um, I try to bring you some skilled coaches. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I got a sneak peek at this webinar today, and it blew my mind. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, if you looked at the word goals and you went, oh, I've heard every webinar ever known to man about goals. I'm just telling you, you haven't heard this one because it is amazing and Kylie is amazing. Kylie is not only an incredible coach um, and an incredible uh, person, but she is an incredible friend to me. Um, and we have, even in her young years, we've known each other for a really long time. So um, anyway, uh, we um, I'm so excited to have you here and I'm, I'm excited about everybody hearing this. Already some people are saying hello. Peggy is here, Bridget is here, um, and Roger is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're glad you're here. NC, Florida, and Texas. Um, I know where they're from. So. Yay. So Kylie, take it. Let's go. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here, guys. So thanks for letting me join you for your evening, whether you're cooking or cleaning or chilling out for the rest of the night. Um, I'm glad you popped on here with us. Um, yeah, I think we've seen, I think we've known each other probably close to 10 years now, which is crazy. It's unbelievable. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Francine asked that I kind of kick this off bragging on myself a little bit, which is always like a little awkward to do. Um, but uh, goal setting is my jam. All right. So when my husband and I got married, we got married 10 and a half years ago. And uh, the first thing that we wanted to really like hit hard, we had a bunch of student loan debt and we weren't proud of it. We knew immediately that that was not something that we were okay with. And it was our only debt. And we said, we can't live like this. And it took us a little while to like get our feet under us and uh, make us some money <laughs> as babies who got married. But our goal was to get out of that. And so we knew we needed a plan in place. And this, the principles that I teach, that's what got us there. That was our first really big hurdle. And it kind of showed us, whew, we can do really big, awesome, hard things if we have the right system in place for it. So we paid off $44,000 in student loans in 26 months. And that, that was that, like, we got over this hump and it was huge for us. Um, we then saved up to buy our home. And I, I'll look up here because in front of my desk, I've got all my pictures of these things that we've accomplished that I, I want to remember and be proud of. Um, so I've got these all here. So we got our debt, we got promotions, we won contests, like things that we worked towards to be able to earn. Um, I published my first book, wrote and published my first book. Uh, we adopted our son from Columbia in 2021. And again, that was a two-year process. And it took... Um, it took that time. It took a lot of dedication and a ton of paperwork, uh, but we did that completely debt-free too. We cash flowed an adoption. Um, and then last, but certainly not least last year, I wanted to set a goal for myself uh, physically that I believed was impossible for, for myself. I wanted to challenge myself in this new way. Um, and so I completed a Spartan trifecta, which is three races, um, and they increase each time. And so my dad, my brothers, and my husband all did that with me, but completed a Spartan trifecta. So those are just some of the things that I keep in front of me all the time. And it's all because of this system, what I teach now, what I love to help other people with, because it's worked for us and I know it can work for other people. And so whatever it is that you're going after you can do it if you have the right plan in place. And so that's what I'm all about. That's who I am. Um, so we're going to kind of kick things off here. Oh, I didn't share my screen. Let me get that up here. Oh, Francine, it's disabled. Please hold. <clears throat> and you're on mute if you are talking to me. <laughs> 
was saying we love technology, don't we? Here we go. There you go. You are good. Thing. Okay. Here we go. Can we see that? Is everyone okay? Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Okay, so guys, this is my jam. Take control. Don't let life happen to you. All right. My mission is to simplify what must be done in life so that we can do more of what we want to. So here we go. We're moving here. Um, some people might be familiar with Christy, right? Um, she's like a soul sister. If we live in Nashville, I know we would be best friends. I just know it, (laughs) but she, if you don't know, she's an author, speaker, podcaster. She's a fantastic podcast. If you're interested, uh, let's get your hopes up with Christy, right? But I just love her. Go follow her on Instagram and all the socials and her podcast. She's fantastic. But for the years that I followed her, At one point in time, she shared this story where she was interviewing someone for a podcast and this gentleman said um, one of his goals for the year was to read 30 books. And she was like, that's a great goal. Like you're learning, you're educating yourself, you're growing. That's fantastic. I'm going to take on that goal. That's a fantastic goal. I'm going to do it too. So she set that goal for herself. And then it got to be a couple months down the road and she was getting further and further behind on that goal. She was, now, if you're going to do 30 books in a year, that's about three books a month. So if you get behind a couple months, it'd be really defeating and really discouraging. And that that's a hard thing with those annual goals is that you, you've got a monthly deadline. Otherwise they become near impossible and you get discouraged and defeated and you just want to give up. So she started feeling this way and she kind of had to take a, se- a second and just step back and go, hold on, why did I take on this goal? Is this important to me? What's going on in my life? And she took stock and said, I've got two small children at home. I'm married. I have that relationship to maintain. I have a full-time job. I'm a speaker. So I travel all around the country for that. And I'm launching my first book and on tour for that. This was not a goal that was conducive for her season of life. It was a good goal. There's nothing wrong with reading and learning and educating yourself and working on that personal development but it wasn't the right goal for her season right then. Sure, she could keep reading, but maybe not three books a month. So she really had to take stock and go, what does my life look like right now? What is the season? And is this the right goal for me right now? So maybe that's you. Maybe you know that setting goals is something that you should do. It's important. Maybe on occasion you forget to, and and I I really should get back to that. But maybe you're tired. Maybe you're just exhausted from what's going on. Maybe you set goals, but you don't even, you're not connected with them. Maybe you don't know what the next step even is. Maybe you have a slew of excuses that you know are excuses. (laughs) Whatever it is for you. I mean, your life may be crazy. Maybe you're running in a thousand different directions. You know that, you know, you should set goals, but even when you do, you either forget about them or you don't have accountability around them. They seem too lofty or maybe you set too many goals or you just can't figure out what the next step even is. You've got the goal, but you just don't even know what, how do I even get there? And the problem is, we all know this stuff. We know that goal setting is vitally important to our success in every area of our life. It's the taking action step that then trips us up. But guys, it doesn't have to be that way. You can set goals that reach for the stars without feeling overwhelmed without feeling like you've got one more thing on your plate. Like setting goals doesn't have to be, well, here's another thing to stack it on the pile. You can do this without getting discouraged, without getting imbalanced in your life. In fact, you can set goals that help you experience more balance and fulfillment in your life and your business. Um, My husband and I both grew up with money struggles in our home. Not the way either of our parents wanted things to go. Life happens, that's how it went. Um, For me, I always knew when things were tight. I felt the stress that my parents carried around money. So when my husband and I got married, we decided, okay, whatever we've got to do, we don't want that for ourselves or for our children. 
So we use the principles that I teach to set up this solid foundation for our financial situation that would carry us through our lives and eliminate money stress for our family. Setting goals is more about what you want out of your life and pursuing that vision than anything else. It's more about seeking peace and contentment and stepping into who you were created to be than it is about achievements. Goal setting is not just for business. It's for every facet of your life. And you can do this. You can set effective goals in simple steps that do not take over your whole life, but instead enrich your whole life. So I want to give you three pieces of goal setting today. So if you're a note taker, get it out, get your notes out, get your pen. <clears throat> All right, the first is going to be vision. Your, vi your success in anything is tied directly to your vision. So again, those note takers, I've got a couple questions for you. So I want you to jot these down. You need to spend some time on these, not right this minute, but take them to your quiet time. Take them to you know some alone time for yourself. Don't try to scribble through these or answers really fast. But the first one is what is your vision? And is it in front of you? Do you see it every day? I'll tell you, my husband and I go through this every year when we go to set our annual goals. And um, sometimes it's hard. Even I've done this for years now. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know. I just can't predict what's coming up next. And sometimes it's my husband. And we ask, we'll fire the same questions at the other person, whoever's struggling with it that year. And it's, you know, some questions around, okay, let's go five years. How old are you? What, what year is that? Where, where do you live? How old are your kids? That's my favorite question. That one hurts. What are you doing for work? How are you making money? Do you own a home? Have you moved to a different state? Who lives in your home? Who's around you? What relationships are you nurturing? Are you mentoring? Or are you being mentored? <clears throat> What's going on? Is the dog still around? <laughs> <laughs> so what is your vision ask yourself some of those questions and then the next that follow-up is is it in front of you once you know what your vision is do you see it every single day it's great to have your vision set up in your office but maybe you've got really good boundaries and you don't go in your office every day are you still seeing your vision on saturday and sunday that's important so where do you have it posted um, and then what's your mission statement? And where do you have that posted that you're reading that every single day and knowing why, why you get up in the morning? I'll share with you mine. I have it, have it in my office. My mission is to inspire and champion deep-seated beliefs, big dreams, and tenacious pursuit. To foster a space where hard questions can be asked and relationships deepened through conversation. To simplify what must be done in life so we can do more of what we want and to help others actively pursue their best self in order to lead their most fulfilling, satisfying, and limitless life. And I've got that here. I can read that every single day. <clears throat> so what is your mission statement and where do you have that posted that you're reading it every day? And guys, there's no right or wrong way to do any of this, except that if you don't have one, you need one in both your vision and your mission. <clears throat> now, I'll tell you, for years and years and years, no one could change my mind on vision boards. I thought they were silly, thought they were hokey, thought they were a little hippy-dippy, and they needed deadlines. I was like, no, I don't need a vision. I have goals. Like, fight me. <laughs> I had deadlines on the things I wanted to do. I didn't need a vision. Someone changed my mind. I understand better how the brain works now. Um, my husband and I had the vision. We didn't have it in front of us. <clears throat> so that, that was the difference that we needed to make there. So to begin with the end in, in mind, I, again, that vision, for me, it was too big. It felt like the end was too far out. It felt like the end didn't have deadlines, um, but that's okay. 
your vision is where you're going, what you're after, and why. So you got to get it up in front of you. And I'll tell you, if we go into the details of it, um, I do have my vision board in front of me. I see it every single day. <laughs> now, it took a long time, a very special person to like drill that into me and I got it, uh, changed my mind. Um, but the other thing about vision boards is one of my pushbacks was that it was a shopping list for so many people. It was a scrapbook party with old magazines that became a shopping list. And that's not, that didn't speak to me. And that's not what it should be. Because you know what? A vision board needs to be about who you are becoming. Who do I want to be? What do I want to do? And then you might throw some shopping items in there and that's okay. But it's got to be more about where am I going? Who do I want to be in this process? And if you're not clear on this vision, you may end up somewhere you didn't mean to go. So I am old enough to remember uh, old school GPSs. Um, I was very proud of my little, I think it was like Tom Tom, and there was another one. I didn't have, I don't remember which one I had, but I felt very fancy when I got one. I was like driving now, and I had my GPS, and I could get around places without MapQuest printed directions. But when this thing first came out, I remember hearing stories on the radio um, of people who would just obey whatever the GPS told them to do. People were ending up in lakes and in ditches because they did not, they just obeyed this little robot in their car who was not always right. <laughs> it was far from right most of the time. So when I say you need to be clear on your vision, I mean the destination and the intention for the route. Now, you might not know all the turns or the roads, but you need to know that your vision is going to take you north or south or the state of your mind or your life or your family when you arrive there. So for example, um, your vision may be a multi-million dollar company. Awesome, fantastic, please go after it. We will cheer you on. But when you get there, are you still married? You have a relationship with each of your children? Do you still exercise and eat well or are you 100 pounds overweight? Did you sacrifice everything on the way to that one piece of your vision? Your clear vision must be multifaceted because you're a multifaceted person. Your success in all areas of your life is directly tied to the clarity of your vision. And that's why your vision needs to include all the areas of your life. All right, number two here, guys, smart goals. I think like 98% of people have seen this before. So we've got specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. I'm going to say, if you're on here, go ahead and put in the comments, which one of these pieces of smart goals do you struggle with the most? I can't see the comments, Francine can, but go ahead and pop those in there. I'll read them after. And Maybe Francine can toss a couple at me. What I found is that most people struggle with at least one piece of this and it can trip, trip them up in the whole thing then. And like, this is great, but if you can't ever nail down that measurable piece, then how are you going to pull it all together? If you can't ever nail down a deadline for something. You can't pull the whole pieces together. There's a reason there's five of them. Mm hmm so, of course, you know, I put in measurable, Christine put in achievable, and Bridget put in specific. She said gold, sparkly, squirrel, moments, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we got all different ones right off the bat. Everyone has their piece. And I don't, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's a personality thing, right? Maybe it's an ADD thing with the specific, <laughs> nailing down those details. Um, so what I want to help you with is pairing some questions to each of these things, because I think these are really, this is a really great piece to setting goals, but some of those words are just too big. They're just too kind of up there in the sky and um, um, abstract. That's the word I'm looking for. They're just kind of out there. What I want to try to do is kind of bring those down to the ground, tie them down for you. So when it comes to specific, what, where, and why? 
You got to parse this one out. Know the details. What am I doing? Where's it going to take me? Why am I doing it? Or where am I doing it? This one, you need to be ready to tell someone on a dime what that goal is that you're after. <clears throat> Measurable is how. How will you know that you're done? This is one of my biggest pet peeves with New Year's resolutions. I cannot stand them because too often what happens is my favorite one is patience. Everyone wants to be more patient. I think you're all lying. No one actually wants to be more patient. You just like want to be a better person somehow. And you think patience is tied to that. Um, <laughs> I've heard this so, so many times when it comes to resolutions. I, I'm going to be more patient this year. Okay, how, how, and how are you going to know that you've gotten there? How will you know that you've reached that destination? Because if you get to the end of the year and you look back and you're just like, I think once or twice I was more patient. So therefore I achieved it. Your family might very much disagree with you. <laughs> so how will you know you're done? How will you know you have achieved it? That you have reached the, you know, where you were trying to go. achievable. So this is your realistic piece. Now, <clears throat> there's a fine line when it comes to setting impossible and stretch goals. How do you ride that line? I do have a resource in my library on this one, so I'll just touch on this a little bit. Um, I am all for the impossible, but not when it comes to setting your goals. These things need to be achievable, okay? So, um, because it's fresh in my mind, the Spartan race last year, I said early on that that was an impossible goal for me. Now, that was impossible mentally. I am a fit person. I work out on a regular basis. I have a very um, capable body. <laughs> if I had been in January, like if I'd gotten a broken leg, that would have been an impossible goal for me to finish that Spartan trifecta. But what I had to do was I was equipped already. <clears throat> I was already in shape. There were some things I needed to work on. I don't like cardio. I absolutely hate it. So I needed to do some cardio. I needed to work on some grip strength and some upper body strength to do a lot of like the monkey bars and the rope climb and, and the technique on a rope climb. And then also it was just really scary. I'd never done anything like this before. I've literally run a 5k one time, like one time in a race. I don't do that kind of stuff. So to say I'm going to do this, to put money towards it, that was really, really scary. So that's what I mean by that piece was impossible for me. It was not actually impossible. It was a stretch goal for me. It was impossible mentally. So it's different from being equipped to do something and something that you really can't do. Okay. I am never going to be um, in professional basketball. I'm not equipped for that. It's just not going to happen. I'm just not tall enough. I can jump really high for a white girl, but I, it's just not going to happen. That would be impossible. So balance that impossible versus stretch by asking that question, am I equipped for this or can I be equipped for this? All right. So relevant. Um, there's lots of things that are relevant. Think back to Christy Wright. Okay. Teaching yourself, getting your self-educating, <clears throat> reading. That's relevant always. We can always be learning and growing. But the question here is, does this matter? And does it matter right now? Um, your health is always important. There's always something you should be pursuing. But is your marriage falling apart? Should you be pursuing and putting in the time and effort to a Spartan trifecta if, you, if your marriage is on the rocks? Like maybe you should put that time and effort into some counseling. Do you have some kids that are like, I, I don't even know, going, going crazy? <laughs> Do you need to put the time and effort into that instead of time and effort into your hobby? Is your business okay and you need to put the focus elsewhere? Does this matter and does it matter right now? Is it relevant to what's going on in this season of my life? Doesn't mean we neglect other things. Um, doesn't mean it won't be important later. Doesn't mean that reading 30 books in a year is not going to happen next year. But does it, does it matter right now? And then time bound questions here are when and who? When will it be done? Who am I going to tell about it? 
Now I'm a big believer in telling people about your goals, but I'm being careful who that goes to. I had some high schoolers beat me up in high school around my goals, and I'm not about that. Find those people who are trustworthy in your corner, and I think it's pretty safe to say that this group is. <clears throat> but commit to telling somebody, or else you will have no accountability around that. So when will it be done? Who are you going to tell? Those both go with that time-bound piece. All right, number three, it's okay. It's okay to keep going. One of the biggest pitfalls I see around goal setting is this concept right here, that it's not okay. And that's just not fair. We're humans. We're not robots. And I'll be the first to say that I wish I were a robot. I wish I wanted to get up at 4 a.m. In the, in the morning. I wish I didn't hit snooze. I wish I wanted to work out every single time I'm supposed to and do all the good things for me and my body and my family and all of it. I am not, I'm human. So it is just not fair for it to not be okay sometimes. And if there's a perfect person out there, I haven't met them or heard of them. We all fall short. And the problem here is that we have this programmed messaging in us that tells us that falling short in our goals means giving up or shame or disgrace or secrecy. Missing a deadline, changing the goal altogether, making mistakes are unacceptable. And that's just not fair to yourself. So the third principle today is to give yourself some dang grace. Pick yourself up and keep going. I shared with you guys early on, um, we paid off $44,000 in student loans in 26 months. What a weird time frame! That was not the goal. The goal was 24 months, two years. We're getting rid of this stuff. We're gonna move on with our lives. The goal was December 31st. I think it was 2015. So January 1st was pretty defeating. The heck, we knew in December it wasn't happening. <laughs> That's pretty frustrating. Gosh, we should have given up, shouldn't we? We should have just thrown in the towel. It's just never gonna happen. Heck, we paid $8,000 in February to finish that off. Uh, that was a big chunk. We had it and we paid it. And we were completely debt-free in February. 26 months. We missed our deadline. We should have just stayed in debt for the rest of our lives. It didn't matter. We kept going. We'd gotten that far already. It's okay to miss your deadline. It's okay to move the deadline. It's okay to change the goal. For those Spartan races, um, so those who are not familiar with them, there's three races and you have to do all three in a calendar year to hit the trifecta and have them all, all your medals fit together. So the first race is um, a 5K with 20 obstacles. The second one is uh, the super and that's a 10K with 25 obstacles. And the third is a 20K with 30 obstacles. So the first one, and again, I tried to recruit all these girls and no one would stick to it with me. So it ended up being my dad, my two brothers, my husband, and me. I said, you guys cannot leave me. <laughs> so uh, we did this first one in North Carolina. No big deal. We got through it. It was great. The sprint. Um, we kept training. We kept working hard. So July in Pennsylvania is the second one, the super. My one brother couldn't do it. He had another commitment. So it's um, four of us. We're only two miles in. So it's an eight mile, seven. It was, a, it was a six miler, but they lied to us. It was eight. Um, so we're two miles into the thing and we come to this one obstacle and it's one none of us had seen before. We hadn't done it. We hadn't seen it online. We didn't watch any tutorials on how to do it because we were too good for that. We just thought we could do anything. So this obstacle is like this. It's in this triangle and you kind of have to like repel off the side of it. So you're holding on to something. You've got your feet up and you kind of have to like shimmy across the thing. So I ran, I guess, to one side and the boys went to the other. So they're here and it's black down the side and the sun is hitting the one that they decided to go to. So it's hot too. Um, so they're staying there. You get a couple of tries with it. They're watching. Everyone's kind of talking like, how are we going to do this? You know, camaraderie with everyone else there. And someone suggests they take their shoes off because the sneakers were slipping down the side of this wooden like arch here or platform. Um, 
So my husband does it. My brother does it. They shimmy across that thing super fast. Their feet are real hot at the end of it. They're putting their shoes back on and my dad does it and he does it and he's moving slower than the rest. Um, He's working really hard. You're getting gassed so fast about halfway through this thing. He's probably three, four feet away from the end and his feet slide down the thing. So it's hot. It's black. He blisters on the way down and rips the blisters open on both feet, balls of his feet and toes. He can't get his socks back out. Now, guys, my dad's a Marine. He's tough. Like he doesn't put up with crap. He cannot get his shoes and socks on. He cannot stand up. So he has to get carted off in the little golf cart by like teenagers. He's, this is, this is humiliating. He had to sit at the bottom of that mountain and wait for three more hours while we finished the rest of that race without him. Not only that, he didn't get his medal. He wouldn't even take the banana they gave him because he was like, I can't. That's just, I didn't earn the banana. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that was frustrating. That was defeating. And um we went home and we, we looked up other races and this and that. And the next, the big race, that really big one, the last one, the third medal is in September. This is July. There's not a lot of time for another race in there. And you think this is a lot of training time. Plus his feet have to heal and you've got to rest. He needs to rest after just those two miles and let his feet heal. Um, and for a good week after at least. So to get another race and it's crazy. So we started saying, you know, dad, there's another one in Jersey in October. Like you could go do your, your super there. He's like, uh, uh, like I'm crossing that last fun finish line with my family. That is what I signed up for. So he and my brother in August go and find another race in Virginia and they knocked it out and he got a second medal. So even uh, all of us are going, dad, you can do it in October. It'll be fine. It'll be just as victorious. And he's like, no way I'm doing this with you guys. That's what I signed up for. I don't know that I could have done that races three months in a row. And especially that big one at last. And he said, no, I'm not going to let this mishap, this life happening to me, this mistake I made beat me up and not cross that finish line together. So guys, it's okay to change the goal. It's okay to make a mistake and learn from it. It's okay to miss the deadline. It's okay to drive to Virginia and do a different race. It is okay. You're not a robot. I love it. I have to tell you, Bridget said, we see where you got your tenacious spirit. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I was gonna, I, I was gonna tell Bridget. That's also wh why she wrote her book, and it is called Marine Corps Brat. Marine Corps Brat, and it is no joke. Like it will not hold back. Um, it's it's a very powerful book. But anyway, she could tell you, you more about Amazon. that some other time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's on Amazon. Anyone who's curious. Um, well, thank you. And this, the choice is yours, guys. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. As I was setting up this PowerPoint, I found this picture. I am not a rock climber. I don't know how to use any equipment. <clears throat> but I can tell you, um, if I did, obviously my goal would be to reach the top without falling and dying. But I would want some really good systems in place. I don't know what all this is. It looks like a rope and carabiners and straps and a guide. <laughs> I would want all of those in place before I ever tried rock climbing. I would need some systems. I don't know about you. Um, I hate grocery shopping. Cannot stand it. Don't know where. I mean, my mom didn't like it growing up. So I, maybe I just inherited it. I don't know. But I hate it. I always have. Um, I don't like hating things. And I especially don't like spending my precious, very valuable time doing stuff I cannot stand. So when I got married and we started grocery, I started grocery shopping once a week. I was like, oh no, this is crap. <laughs> I'm not doing this. So I thought, said, this can't be the rest of my life. I'm not doing that. So I set up a system and I meal plan for one hour every month and I grocery shop twice. And that covers us for the month. <clears throat> and it gets even better because in the past three years, I turned that twice a month grocery shop chip into a uh, grocery pickup. So I don't even have to go in stores anymore. <laughs> it's the best ever. It's a dream. But <laughs> that dream for me, that time-saving dream came from a system. 
because I realized that I had a choice. I could continue hating the grocery store and be there all the time, or I could find a better way. In, you know what else the system does? I never have to figure out what's for dinner. The plan is on the fridge and I created it three weeks ago and it tells me and I just have to execute. The system saves me time, saves me energy. It saves me thinking. I can just execute the plan now. Setting goals is great. Applying the SMART principles is good and giving yourself grace is fair. But do you have a system for setting your goals or are you shooting in the dark? So here's what I mean by this. You're a multifaceted person. Do your goals fit in? Time and money touch everything. Did you account for that? When my husband and I establish our goals every year, we cover things like days off, his PTO, travel plans for the whole year, personal priorities, expected income, new and old habits. We ask questions like, what's important to you right now? And how are you going to level up this year? We have a system we follow, and that enables us to reach high and go farther with our goals for our goals. So without the right system in place to set goals that drive you in the direction of the life that you want to live, you'll wind up creating a life you didn't want. The choice is yours. The system is here. So that's what I do. I am here to provide you with the system to create the right goals for you in whatever area of life is right for you right now at this moment, a season you're in. And in that, we'll take stock of your vision. We'll break down the goals and identify potential roadblocks so that we can prepare for them ahead of time so that you can keep pursuing a life that you're proud of. So my next class does begin April 6th. And special for you guys, um, because Francis, Francis, Francine, so sorry, has so generously let me come on and share with you guys all of this. Um, I am offering 25% off for my early bird special for this next class. So this will only be available for five days. Um, and so the code for that is early bird. And I think Francine's going to put that in the comments for the link. It is Kylie Robinson slash take control. And that special is early bird, E-A-R-L-Y-B-I-R-D, all caps. So she'll put that link in there and that code. <clears throat> so if you feel like you just need that extra oomph to get through things, maybe it's clarifying that vision or just backing up your goals. How do I do that and create those next steps for myself and know what the right next step is? Um, we'll take in, um, we bring in the humanity to setting goals. Who are you? What do you want? What's your season? Does it fit into your time? What does this look like for you? So that's all in there. But also for you guys, um, I do have a freebie, <clears throat> uh, a gift for you. So five steps to quit procrastinating and break down your goal. So if this is something you're like, you know what? This is really good. I just want a couple extra steps. This is for you. And Francine's going to pop the link in there for that as well. Um. <clears throat> I think that's what I got. So does anyone have any questions or biggest takeaways they want to share? Thank you so much for being on here with us. We, um, I am watching the um, chat. It's been blowing up. You're going to have to go back and look at it. I'll of go course, comment. You know, everybody uh, uh, resonated with the, the grocery shop and you got a, a lot of mamas on here. <laughs> I, I think, I, I think Christine said, we never have any food. <laughs> the worst yes. <laughs> oh, I was with a friend recently and down in Florida and I said I'm going to the store one time and then we're gonna have everything we need for the week and she's like no we'll come back four more times if we need something I was like no no I hate it you're going alone she's like what <laughs> she loves the grocery <laughs> store mm -mm -mm. <laughs> 
Yes. So uh, Bridget said, so great, Kylie. Thank you. Tyra said, love the SMART goals. I agree that you did those so different than, than I had ever seen them before. I love the add-on and just much more clarity for me too. Um, and Christine said, yeah, the kids cheer when I finally go shopping. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. She said, my 10 year old offered to do the online order for me. <laughs> that sounds like me. I feel like, let's just get it done, mom. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yay. Well, so tell them a little bit, um, how many weeks again, and just kind of go over that again with your, um, with your take control of your life. Yeah. Yeah. It's a seven week course. So we meet, it's a very small group on zoom. Um, so that way we can dig into it. Who needs help? What are your takeaways? What, what is important to you right now? What are those goals? Let's walk through the different steps. Um, we'll back out of everything. So, you know, what's that vision? We'll go through annual monthly yearly today. <clears throat> We're going to make sure we take action because we don't want to procrastinate on anything. And that's the power of having that small group is we really form a relationship there and a team and really talk through it and encourage one another to get moving. Um, so it's seven weeks again, starting April 6th. Uh, I've got a couple different time options. We'll dig into that once people are, you know, getting in there and getting signed up. Um, and it's just one hour plus a little bit of homework. The homework can take as long as you need it to. Some weeks are heavier than others, um, but we'll be there and I'll be available to you. So yes. we'll, we'll get there and make it happen for you. Uh, I'll tell you the re the class I just did recently. Um, there was one gal who said, you know, I came into this starting a business expecting to that all my goals needed to be focused on this business. She goes, but when we talked about being a multifaceted person, it made me go, Oh, there's actually two other areas of my life that are more important. She's like, I'm working on the business. I'm getting there, but that's not where my focus needs to be right now. It's actually these other two areas of my life. Mm -hmm. So that was really good to see is, you know, you need to have goals around each area of your life and not, just, and not, not all of those at one time we want to focus in and hone on the two most important spots. Um, but it's important, you know, we, people tend to have a lot of fitness goals, financial and, um, and business is what I've seen. Yeah. And some people pull those in, in our program, in our program. And some people realize, how do I set goals around relationships? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How do I set goals around um, education? And it might not be going to college again. It might be just continuing to feed myself, you know, mm -hmm. about personal development. Or how do I have goals around um, my spiritual focus, my mm -hmm. relationship with God? Mm -hmm. So, okay. it, you know, we dig into whatever it is that you need right then and try to recognize those and kind of pull those out of where you're at right now. I love Christine. She said, I love your stories and I need your systems. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, girl. <laughs> I love it. Bridget said clarity. That's so important. She said, yes, we have to focus on our personal life too. relationships, not all business. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Because yes. yes. no fun getting to the top in your business and find out you've lost everybody, everything that you value. Right. And the whole purpose of why you built that business in the first place. So yeah. And that's good. well that you said value. That's another piece we dig into. And that's something that, um, I believe we have the best system for uncovering values. I've never seen anything else like it. That's why we kind of created this and put it together. Um, but to, instead of putting a list of words in front of you, what, what can we look back on in your life and determine these are actually the values you're living out of? And are you proud of that or not? Maybe we need to adjust some of those. Mm, that's so good. And, and that's what I love when we were, we were talking about your website and putting all the words in there was that you really want to design help people design the life you set all these goals and then if you end up in the wrong place what's that right and you're not happy with what you built and so you guys don't just say here's how you set goals and get them done and be haphazard with even what goals you set you actually help people design the life that they want right they're yeah. your goals uh, every time you say i want that you and and your in big letters because it was so important. And it really made me think helping you put that together is I thought that is important, right? You don't want to have all these goals, just like what you were saying with the story with Christy Wright, that was a good goal for that other person. And a lot of times we start duplicating or comparing our life with someone else. And we start setting goals based on someone else's um, relevant 
right? Based on someone else is relevant. We or need to- what a family member wants for you. Oh, come on. What a close friend suggests that you should do next. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. all your friends are having babies. You should have a baby too. Yeah. Wow. What are those things that that peer pressure or family pressure is telling you that you should do next? Wow. <laughs> That's so good. So, so yeah. And so that's the neat thing about this seven weeks is not only are you getting systems on how to reach those goals, but also systems on how to find out what are your real goals and what really, what kind of life do you want to lead? So yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. Kylie, this is so, so, so good. So, Thank you. Um, and um, you guys will continue to look at the chat for those of you that are on the replay, you, we are here for you as well. And, um, you know, get ready, definitely down, download her freebie. It's how to overcome procrastination and get one of those goals broken down. It's really an awesome workbook. And, um, and then if you're ready, April 6, jump in. Um, I know you've got some goals that are important to you and you really, really want to reach them. So let's do it. Let's go. Let's get after it. Let's go. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me, Francine. Yes. And we'll do it again sometime. Okay. All right. Bye. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Still recording.